let's stop right there. Did you know that the hermit crab is the only crustacean that can climb trees? Also, did you know that high-definition video gaming is but one of many delights provided by your Xbox 360? Let's see what else we have inside this astonishing device, shall we? Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, depending on when I upload this video, um, I worked on my PlayStation 3. I did a maintenance uh, update on it, and I told you novice and advanced ways of extending the life of your PlayStation 3, and I started noticing that my Xbox 360 was starting to sound a little bit loud, and so I'm going to do some preventive work on this and uh, get back up running to 100% uh, working settings. So first off, I will give you a rundown on some novice um, maintenance tips on this system where you don't have to open this up. And uh, one of the key things is, again, like I said last time, air compression. And one of those little uh, com cans of compressed air, you want to get one of those go into like each of these ports and just spray the hell out of, out of this system. And that will help get rid of a lot of that dust. Dust is electronics number one enemy. And so you want to absolutely do that. Secondly, you do not want to put one of these on the carpet. The carpet is a incredible stack electricity conductor and you want to make sure this is on a hard surface. and. You want to make sure that there's no like carpet of any kind that can create a static electrical shark that can short out something in the system and probably make it red ring. Uh, if you're looking at buying one of these old fat Xbox 360 systems, you want to look for one that is a Jasper. If you don't know what that is, simply just make sure that the uh, manufacturing date on the back is uh, late, late 2008 or after 2009 and you should be golden um another thing is this one's a little unconventional but find yourself like a cigar box or a little tiny box that fits in between these two vents on the side and then when you have this on the table the bottom fence will not be obstructed and they will have plenty of room to breathe. That way you have all the fence uncovered. You want to make sure that this thing stays horizontal. This was not designed well to play vertically, although I would love to play this vertically. It, it, it's terrible on the disc. It's um, top heavy. It completely covers up this bottom venting area. If you do it vertically, it was not designed to do vertical standing like the PS3 was. So this is ideally meant to be a horizontal plate system. And then uh, to cool it, a third party um, USB coolers or ones that hook into the power source because it just causes the power brick to work harder and it those clip on external fans usually don't do any good i want to get those as well because it's like hey more fans would work better logically uh, i mean you know simple logic right but um no they don't and so if you want to increase the airflow of cool air with a separate power plug all right not in the same power socket get a tiny fan and have it aimed at the system that'll help cool it off at least it'll breathe in some cool air and so that is um, the extent of the novice uh, maintenance tips for an Xbox 360 kind of fat Jasper uh, edition uh, now I'm going to go into the advanced um, method which will involve uh, taking this apart removing the heat sinks and putting on a new thermal paste onto the GPU and CPU. I'm not going to do the ex expert method, which is reballing um, the chips. That is a very hard process. I have never done it before. I'm not even going to try and do it now. And I'm actually interested to find out if this has the better heat sink in here, or if it has just the standard heat sink that a lot of them have. I've seen some Jaspers open up 
that have the standard heatsink. I'm suspicious that this has the better heatsink because I've been playing this for a long time. So I'm gonna get into it and I'm gonna have the camera a little bit different than my last video because that one you couldn't really see what I was doing. So okay, so I have everything I need right here to get started. I have the system itself. I have some uh, shop rags to uh, you know wipe stuff up and clean stuff up. I'll put those over here for right now because I don't need them terribly. Um, I have my alcohol to clean off stuff. I have the compressed air to help blow out dirt. And then I have, you know, some Q-tips, you want to use these. And then thermal pads for the few places that I think they should already have some. This system didn't desperately need thermal pads like the PlayStation 3 did. This is actually a much safer system to work on and a less complicated system to work on because this, the power brick is outside the system so there shouldn't be any power in this any chance of getting shocked by anything whereas the playstation 3 had an internal power brick and so i was very concerned about shocking myself and then of course that uh, thermal paste that we're going to re um, apply and then we have uh tools um Flat bladed screwdriver, the flatter the tip, the better. Uh, some pliers, neo no pliers. Uh, these will be kind of helpful. Tweezers, uh, Torx wrench. You want, I think this is a five Torx wrench. You want a five and ten Torx wrench plus a screwdriver. So I think I have everything I need to open this thing up. Also, don't forget to look at um, ifixit.com. Uh, they have step-by-step -step instructions on taking one of these apart, and so that should help you out. And also, check out uh, Spawnwave. He has a couple of really good videos on taking these apart, and just the information he has is really solid. I highly recommend checking out his uh, videos. He has some really great teardown videos, and he's one of the reasons why I am confident enough I can take this apart. So, anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously take off the external hard drive if you don't have one of these and you have a system like this you should get one they're now these days super affordable um if you want a really big one like a 500 gig one or a 320 gig like that one is you're gonna have to look at third party external hard drives but like the standard one there's like a, a 60 120 i think it was the largest like standard one and the official microsoft hard drives are the only ones that can actually do backwards compatibility with the classic xbox system okay so these face plates come off pretty easy um i want to be careful not to you know damage this one because this is a special like aftermarket face plate that I got and it broke when I opened it but uh just want to be careful with it yeah so there it is set over here yeah now you want to be careful removing one of these because these plastic tabs are very sensitive and this is an old system so you're looking at potentially breaking these tabs so just be very gentle taking this apart and then this top plate i think i broke one of the tabs on this one simply because it was my first time like trying to get these tabs to actually undo okay so now that i have both the covers off um we're going to now work on this hinge that um, basically the shell will open up like a book. The front's not the hard part, it's the back because while the front has these clear clips you can undo and you want to be gentle about it, the back you have to like stab the screwdriver in here to activate these little tabs. And like this one over here was like really hard for me last time. I felt like I was going to have to break it. And I guess I didn't. But so yeah, these are kind of difficult. And I'm not even going to record myself trying to do that. Okay, so correction. You don't want to use a screwdriver on these backs. Because it's really tiny hole. You want to use something thin and tiny. Like that.
Okay, so once you get that done, it should just slide right out. And that can use a little bit of cleaning, so I'll get that clean later on. Although, if you notice, there's not a terrible amount of dust around these ports simply because of that one method I was telling you about. Just once every couple of months, spray the shit out of this with a can of compressed air, and that will extend the life of your system quite a bit. And as you can see, good news, this has all eight of these black screws. If you watch Spawn Wave, he'll tell you about how if these are missing, then the system's going to be dead in like a handful of months. So um, this thing has been working since 2014, and for good reason. It still has these screws. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, this actually, the way I got this was by sheer dumb luck I got a decent system because in reality I the way I bought this I should have had a bad system because I did not know what to look for and so I was just desperate to get a PS3 and I saw an Xbox 360 for 50 bucks on eBay and so I thought it's cool and I didn't know that there were certain motherboards I was supposed to be looking for I got super lucky, I got a Jasper, which is like the best, you know, fat Xbox 360 to get. And of course, this one didn't have a crappy refurbished job where they didn't have those screws, so this still has the X clamps. A lot of times to get rid of the X clamps, just put down just bolts to tie into the board and that like kills the system apparently. And definitely use ifixit.com as like a template on what screws to take out at what time. I always like to keep each step screws together in a little separate pile. And that way when I'm putting this back together, it goes together like a dream. Uh, don't throw all your screws together because then you're going to be going like, okay, which screw was it? So I like to do separate little piles while following ifixit as a teardown guide. You now I have all the... Uh, step 8 screws here and step like 9 screws would be over here and whatnot. so. Um. And now I should be able to flip this over and take this off. And yes, it does have the improved heat sink. Um, what I mean by the improved heatsink is uh, typically you'd have this heatsink for the CPU, the heatsink underneath the disk drive for the GPU, and that would be it. And apparently that wasn't a very effective heatsink, so they came out this new one with a copper tube that comes over here to this other heatsink. So that's probably why this has been working since 2014 perfectly fine, because it's a Jasper and it has the improved heatsink. Um, and I wasn't even the first owner on this, so really, I should have gotten screwed over bad on this, and I didn't. I got super lucky with this console. So, now we're going to remove disk drive, which, it's so much easier to remove than the PlayStation 3. Like, every one of these little connectors was, like, glued in, and I was afraid I was going to tear out the wires. That just lifts out, yeah. So it's a little dusty underneath the disk drive. I'll blow this board out completely. And then the shroud should be relatively easy to remove. And the shroud's a tiny bit dirty, but I'll clean it out. Again, me using the compressed air probably really helped it quite a bit. This is 
is a lot more simpler than taking apart a PS3, I have to admit. No wonder developers like working on this better. <laughs> Now, one interesting thing with this little piece right here, this is like kind of the power button, whatnot, and the lights, the red ring of death will be displayed here, or the green lights. You want to make sure when you're pulling this out of the front, you do it on this side and at the bottom so that you don't damage this connector at all. So you just want to kind of pull here and a little bit of leverage at the bottom. You don't want to pull over here or at the top or whatnot. Uh, th this does feel kind of very fragile to me, so I'm going to set it down somewhere soft and gentle. Okay, now I'm going to unscrew the motherboard. <sighs> yeah, I decided that this needed to get new thermal paste because this came out in 2009 and I got in 2014. The previous owner had opened this up for some unknown reason because the warranty sticker was gone. And so, yeah, this needs a new thermal compound. And I'm pretty sure this will run a lot better once I clean everything out, put on a new thermal compound. So far, this has been a much smoother breeze than the PS3. The PS3 was a monumental task. Okay, so there's a fair amount of dust underneath, and I left the fan in. I think I'll just clean this like it is in the fan. And here is the chipset. Now we're going to re remove, as you can see, here's that, uh, GPU heatsink I was telling you about, how they added on this little add thing. Apparently that helped it a lot better because the original ones, it was just this, and apparently it didn't do any good. And so now it does a little bit better, and so I'm gonna remove these two fans and see how dry the paste is underneath. So flipping it over, we have these little X clamps. And these are crucial because apparently they help the board. They let the board flex a little bit and just like putting a bolt through doesn't do that. <laughs> and so ooh, I removed an X clamp and there was a good chunk of dust underneath there. So I think it was a good thing I did this. Of course you want to be careful doing these. Yeah, like right there, I could have damaged the board right there. Wanna be careful. Okay, so we have the board. Okay, take this off. And we're gonna take that off. Gosh, is there any compound left? Yeah, there was like nothing. Okay, so clearly it's a good thing I did this. We're gonna clean this off, put on new thermal compound, and that should make this system much, much better. Also blow off all this dust. So I cleaned this up as best as I could. Uh, the old thermal paste was so hard, I mean, it was barely moist and uh, I cleaned up the two heat sinks and so now I'm going to reapply them but instead of putting thermal paste on both of them and then trying to put them on at the same time without I'm just going to work on this heat sink first or no correction this heat sink and then that one that way I don't have to worry about you know making a mess while I have this over. And so, got my MX-34.
Okay, so I have the heat seat back on. Um, hopefully this will work and the fan won't run so hard. Now I'm gonna clean the rest of the body before I put it back in. And I'm also thinking about putting uh, four thermal pads on the body where these RAM chips are to help disperse some of the heat a little bit. So Okay, so I put on uh, four thermal pads over the RAM cards that uh, appear on the bottom. So, um, actually, they may not be RAM cards, but they're chips that are on the bottom. I've seen other people do this, and so, I mean, why not? Okay, so just a quick thing, um, this fan, you're going to want to take a couple of cotton swabs or Q-tips with alcohol and clean this fan out because this thing was insanely dirty even after using compressed air every couple of months. I mean, that thing was just like inundated with dust. So, now we're going to try and slide this back in like nothing ever happened. So that you know this thing doesn't overheat and kill itself <laughs> this fan is so crucial to this thing i would have that, that i would have been an idiot not to reconnect that fan now we're going to want to reconnect this back here so we'll do a couple of these first Just one giant heat sink. Next one is re returning the power button. Now we return the shroud. Cleaning up a little bit. It's pretty clean actually, because I was doing the compressed air method, but still a little bit of dust we can clean up. So now that the shroud's back on, I seen some people open up the disk drives to like optimize and whatnot but honestly the disk drive has been working perfectly fine i've had no problems with it and if it ever does have problems it's super easy to get to without having to do too much not as extensive as removing the heat sinks so i'll just leave it be for now yeah, these are so much easier to work with the PlayStation 3s. And while I'm at it, I'm going to try and clean up this bit. Try and make it a little bit smoother it does show signs of dirt but it's kind of hard to clean this all together so
Now we're going to return the six silver screws into the system that will hold it all together. Yeah, overall, I think this was a much easier system to work on than the PS3. It seemed like it was a little bit easier to get to. Apart from maybe the X clamp. The X clamp seemed a little bit hard for me and a little bit easy to damage the board if you weren't extra cautious. I mean, you probably saw the thing slip a couple of times and luckily it didn't seem like I damaged it. We'll see if this doesn't start up. now sealed up. Let's re-add the disk drive button. Okay, so I have the disk drive button back in, and now we just need to reconnect the casing in the back, which they should just slide in. Funny how this is so much easier to put back together than it is to take apart. Yep. Now we just need to return the top plate and the bottom plate, face plate, and then we are done. how that goes together so much easier <laughs> coming apart And that is the reassembly of my Xbox 360 fat Jasper model. Now, let's see how this does. See if I broke it or not. Okay, so, um, yeah, this has been running pretty good, and, uh, the system's not making the same noise it was last time, and so, yeah, no, um, so that worked, uh, that has been my novice and advanced method of maintaining your Xbox 360 Fat Edition. So, uh, I hope this video helps any of you out there who are trying to, um, keep your, uh, Xbox 360 alive, and, uh, that's about it for this video. Don't forget to do the thing. You know, the thing. Uh, my name is Christopher Connell with 11 Hour Views, and that will be all.